Hello, I'm Staff Sergeant Wilkins with the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. In this video, I'm going to cover how to pin your ceremonial blouse. While watching this video, get your Old Guard handbook and go to page 23. Starting on page 23 covers everything about pinning of your uniform and the different measurements that are required. All right, now we're going to show you a close-up and I'm going to talk about some of the first items you want to pin on your uniform. So, whenever you start to pin your blouse, the best thing to do is start at the top of your pockets with these items. On this side, it's my medals rack. On the other side, it's my unit awards. This is your foundation. So what I mean by that is whenever you pin this first row of medals that I have underneath this row of medals, I have to make sure this is on left to right and up and down, etc. Okay? If this is off and I continue to make other pinnings, like pinning my airborne wings on or my CIB, then if this is off, now everything is off and I'll have to take it all off and do it all over again. So when you start this process, take your time and measure the unit awards and the medals first and get them correct before you move on. So centered on the pocket, you just want to take your micrometer and now I'm not going behind my medals. I'm not overlapping it. I'm kind of canting the micrometer and I'm going to press it up against the side and I'm going to get the measurement at the edge of the pocket right here just like this. Now that I have that information, I'm going to come around to this side and do the same thing. And I'm measuring to the uh, metals rack that's behind here. Okay. And then I'm going to measure over here as well and check. And I want to make this, this distance the same. That's the first measurement I recommend you get on. After that, once you have your left to right correct and your metals rack centered, it's very easy to just make quick adjustments up and down and walk your metals rack up and down. And I'll show you that right now. All right, so I've taken the damage off the back of this metals rack right here. All right, so for example, let's just say on this side that I was low or high or whatever it is, but my left to right measurements from here and here is correct. So all I need to do is slowly pull this out and I'll try to spin it, you may not be able to see it, but I'm gonna slowly pull the pin out and I'm going to look where it's placed at and now I can just go up a couple of threads on my uniform and then push it in to raise it up. So now I just raised it probably about two ticks. So it's small adjustments and the same thing over here you can walk it up and down. Okay. So Left to right justified is the same as the regular army in accordance with AR 670-1. So, for example, your lapel here, your collar, it would have to cover three quarters of a certain badge or item or award that you have for you to have the ability to shift it to be right justified against the pocket over here like this. I don't have that in my case, so everything is centered up and down. Same thing goes on the other side. If your collar covers three quarters of an item, then you can left or right justify it out. And you can place tape on the sides right here if you want to use tape. I personally don't like the tape. I just like to measure it all out using a micrometer. So I'm going to talk about measurements. So on your first row, you'll have 16 ticks. If you move your micrometer to this side, hold it just like this and measure to the top of your metals rack. And it should be uh, 32 ticks. Now, like I said, this side is going to say 16, this side is going to be 32 because this side is in 30 seconds of an inch and this side is in 64 of an inch. But the number you're mostly going to use is on the 32nd side, which is 16 ticks. Okay. The next row of ribbons will be at 20 ticks. And if I move my micrometer over here, it'll be on the 40 mark on the 64th side. Now, what you want to do is take your micrometer and slide it behind your metals rack like this and go to the bottom of your airborne wings and it should be 8 ticks. All right, so checking your CIB, one of the things you can do is go from your top metals rack to the very top edge. So for example, this one's two inches and 12 ticks, and then I can come over here on this side and check this edge of my CIB. And so what this does is it'll help me figure out if I have a cant on this item because it's so far away from the pocket trying to measure it and make sure it's correct. Another little trick you can do is take your micrometer and kind of eyeball it, use it to try to line up and see if you're centered all the way up and true. Color brass, you're always going to go to the edge of the gold, not to the edge of your blue disc. 
okay? So from this corner to the edge of the gold should be a one inch measurement, and then you want the spacing from the edge of the gold to here to be even, and from this seam line to the edge of the gold to be even as well. What I do is I place the one inch mark on my micrometer right in this corner, and I rotate my micrometer until it touches or overlaps that gold, and then I'll make an adjustment. Then I come up, and I'll measure from the edge of the gold to the edge of the collar right here. Normally here, it's anywhere between uh, 14, 16 ticks. It depends on the size of the collar, size of the blouse. But you want to make the same amount, so 14 ticks and 14 ticks. So evenly spaced between here and here, and one inch from this corner to the edge of the gold right there. So now I'm going to talk about the unicocades that are up here on the top. So I'll talk about the blue cord over here on this side as well. You want to measure with the blue cord on if you have a blue cord, all right? Because if you measure with it off and then put it on, your measurement's going to be wrong. So from this seam to the center of the cockade is your measurement. So for example, this is one inch and 20 ticks. <clears throat> then I'm going to slide my micrometer underneath. Now I'm not going to force the button over but I'm going to touch the button because you're not going to be forcing the button over while you're wearing it. So don't push the button over or slide your micrometer under. Just go to the edge of the button and then 1 and 20 ticks from the top of the feather, not from the top of the hat. Now, if you notice, there's gold piping on the sides. Then you have this stitch line. You may not be able to see it, but obviously you will see yours on your uniform. So what you want to do is center this cockade in between the stitch lines from this position to this position. So make sure the distance is the same here and here. You don't necessarily have to measure it. You can kind of eyeball it. If you want to be super precise, you can measure it. So on your badges, if you have one badge, just like you know your deployment badge here, it's centered from the pocket down to the bottom, okay, and then left and right. So you just measure whatever your measurements are. Left to right, you can have two. And then Air 6 Centers 1 says you can have a badge on each pocket now. So however you want to measure those, People, what people do is they measure from the edge of the seam over here. Make sure your pockets are stitch switched as well before you do this. So you're going to make sure there's stitch switching under here and under here. And your flap is stitch switched down except for your little button right here. Uh, that way everything's nice and flat before you try to do this. So now I'm going to talk about backings. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do some weird stuff with backings. All you really need to do, especially if you have a lot of stuff or airborne wings, which has those very small prongs on the back, use this manila folder right here and use some masking tape. So you can just literally take it and place it up here like this and trace it out or even cut some excess off and then trim it. Uh, if it's along your collar, make sure you cut like a nice angle like this so that it doesn't stick out at any point. Um, when you make these, you want it to be the entirety of all these awards. So if I had more stuff up here or whatever I had, that backing is going to come below my metals rack outside my metals rack, it's going to come up like this, it's going to go over my CIB and then come down away and outside of everything. What I see people do is they'll make individual ones for each item or they'll make them really narrow and small where it's just barely right here. So what, the reason you want to make it nice and big is it keeps everything flat, it keeps all the measurements correct when wearing it, and then when you put one to two layers of tape over this folder whenever you're doing it, what that does is it prevents your sweat from making this material soft and coming apart. And if, if you make the tape too thick, then when you try to put your damage on like your airborne wings, for example, uh, it can be very difficult. So you may have to take a razor blade or a razor hobby knife and trim out just a little bit of that tape. Um, so I'm flipping it over, you can kind of see what mine looks like. This is it. I got two layers of tape. I have all my damage on. And then I have this. This one's old. I've used it for a while. If they get damaged, it's not hard to get some more and just make another one real quick. So here's some other tips and tricks uh, when pinning your blouse. You can get latex gloves or non-latex gloves, some type of surgical glove, so that when you're touching all of your, you know, your CIB, your collar brass, you don't put fingerprints all over your metals and stuff. This is just a blouse we use for like training up here. So I don't really care about having it on. But when you have those on, you do lose a little bit of that dexterity. Um, you don't feel things as much and you might poke your finger whenever pushing through. Um, so just take your time. 
But the purpose of wearing those gloves, it's what well, you've cleaned everything. Like in the other videos we talked about, take everything off, put it in high quality glass cleaner in a, like a Tupperware container, let it soak for like 10 to 15 minutes. Dry it off thoroughly with a microfiber towel. Only use nice microfiber towels. Don't use Q-tips or anything else because it's just going to scratch it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Then everything's dried and ready to put on. I put my gloves on and then I'm going to take my time and start placing everything on. All right, so now I'm going to talk about some tips on your buttons right here. Uh, some service members, maybe you have that hourglass shape where you have a really tiny waist and you have you know a big chest or big shoulders because you lift a lot of weights. Some things you may need to do is you can somewhat uh, tailor your blouse. This also helps with uh, pressing your blouse as well. You can cut your buttons off. So when you do this, you replace it with safety pins like this. So these are plastic. These are like the kid safe ones. And as you see, I still have all the knots um, from the stitching from where those buttons were placed so I know exactly where they went. And on your safety pin, something you might want to do is take some needle nose pliers and just put a slight bend in it right here in the middle and then you come to the, the front. So whenever I cut the front off, what I do is I burn it with my lighter and then I just kind of touch it with my finger and it makes this little dot. So now I know exactly where my button goes. So what I do is I take my safety pin and push it through. I have a little bit of it exposed. I make sure my eagle's flying straight up and down. And then you don't want to have a huge gap so when you pin it, you don't want to have this giant uh, needle exposed like that. So you, you place it on, you slide it back down, or it's still kind of hidden. Then you just take your blouse and I fold it like this and just slide it straight through. And then I clip it. Now the reason I clip it like this with it up, you would think that wouldn't make sense. But what you do is when you slide this down and fold it over, it's not going to come undone. Um, and it shouldn't fall out or anything like that. So now that I've talked about that, something you can do is you can kind of tailor your buttons. So you can offset them from where these stitch marks are that I showed you just a second ago. So you can kind of shift them off a little bit. You can have them go at a little bit of an angle. It's something you might have to check. Now obviously, if you do this too much, then what's gonna happen is your pleats are gonna be off or you may not be able to blouse properly uh, it's something you can play with so that the blouse looks presentable on you because everything is a tailored fit here in the old guard. All right, so now I'm going to show you a little trick with the buff strap. So I've unclipped mine. Undo this. So what you can do is through this portion right here, there's a couple options. You can cut this leather off and then super glue it or hot glue it on. You can take a one bar and glue it onto the buff strap. The other option you have is you can force the prongs through the leather, okay? But essentially what you're doing is on the top center of the bus strap, so you have two shown in the front and three shown in the back. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna mount this one bar underneath the bus strap like so. So then, once it's mounted to your bus strap, then you're gonna pin this into your shoulder. And what that does is when you're wearing your uniform, your bus strap won't slide too far forward or too far back. It sets it in place and it won't ever move unless you take those prongs out. Touching up your uniform, if it's really bad or if you gotta press it, you might as well go ahead and clean stuff like I've talked about in other videos and I talked about in this one as well. Uh, but, you know, if your uniform's still good or you prepped everything for a ceremony and you've had it sitting in your closet or whatever it is and now you're gonna touch it up, you're gonna steam anything and you wanna go back and touch up everything, uh, what you can do is you can just breathe on it with your breath. So like that. And then just take your microfiber towel and rub it off. Another thing you can do is you can apply high quality glass cleaner just a little bit to your microfiber towel. Don't spray it on your uniform, but just put a little bit on your towel and you can touch it up and then switch to a dry part of your towel and then kind of buff it out, make sure there's no streaks or anything left. So a lot of people in the old guard, they love lint rollers because it's convenient. What you can do is get a roll of masking tape. It's gonna last you a lot longer and it's a lot cheaper. And what you wanna do is just make a roll. I've showed you how to do that in other videos as well. When you're coming through, you just wanna pat everything down and try not to tape on stuff, okay? You don't wanna put the glue or adhesive from the tape on there. So just come around 
and tape everything off just like this and then once you get a bunch of stuff on there like for example I'm putting my hand inside my sleeve right now like I'm putting it on and that's to kind of give me something to push against and once you get a bunch of stuff on your tape roll you can just switch to a new part and it takes you a few seconds to make a new one and then you just keep going until you get everything nice. Alright, so now I'm going to go over a brief summary of this video. Remember, the first thing you want to do is wash your hands right before you start this process. You want to get any dirt or anything on your uniforms. You can use gloves if you want to use gloves. The first thing you should pin should be your medals rack or your unit citations. Make sure that these are on before moving on to anything else. If your medals rack or unit citations is off, then everything you pin above it is going to be off because that's what you use to measure the distance from here to here or here to here. So take your time and do it right. If you get confused at any point, take a break and refer to page 23 of your blue book. All your measurements and all the standards are inside this book right here.